Welcome back to my ministry. I'm your host, uh, Prophetess Nurse uh, Lois. Listen, um, today I am celebrating the day of remembrance that the good Lord um, established with uh, Noah. And I'm going to talk more um, in details about this day and how I give uh, honor, respect, and um, reverence uh, to God. I want to make sure I use those three words um, on this day because um, this morning uh, God was talking to me in my sleep and he said that he was upset because his people don't honor him, don't respect him, and don't show reverence uh, to him. So I'm gonna break down uh, the definitions of honor, respect, and reverence. So honor um, is to give um, high respect, great esteem, um, and great respect. So these are verbs that you show okay toward god um respect is having a feeling of deep um admiration for god elicited by um god's abilities and qualities and achievements and you know if god has helped you do anything you should automatically have respect for him okay and reverence uh, is showing deep respect and showing um, honor. And yesterday, um, I talked about how I'm not afraid of God, but how I respect him. But because my love has been perfected in God, um, there's no fear, but there's great respect, great reverence, and great honor that I give to God. And today is no other. I mean, I respect and honor and give reverence to God every day, but on special days that are um, established in the tablets of heaven and covenants that God has made with um, his people, I show uh, honor, respect, and reverence, and then I'm going to show you why, how that connects to me honoring the day, today, uh, the day of remembrance. So I'm going to take you back a little bit, um, maybe ooh, 25, 30 years ago, uh, I was in church. And I told you, you know, I had a phenomenal pastor. I mean, this man taught me, children, the whole congregation, how to walk in the earth like Jesus. He was not shucking. The man was not jiving, okay? He was going to raise up true sons and daughters of God. And I'm an example um, of what he raised up um, in the earth, okay? And so... Um, during this time of growth and development in the house of God, where I got my training, okay, um, my pastor invited some uh, Messianic rabbis, spirit-filled rabbis, uh, to our church. And it was such a blessing because the honor and respect and reverence that they have for God the ones that walk with God for real, for real, it's on a whole nother level than what we're seeing in the church. And I remember um, after the rabbi uh, spoke in our church, um, I felt led in my spirit to go into our bookstore. And when I went into the bookstore, the rabbis bowed over opened up their arms and ushered me into the bookstore. And one of the rabbis stepped to me and he said to me, do you have 
the original word of God in its original format before it was translated into the King James Version. And I said, no, I do not. He says, well, let me introduce you to the Torah. I knew about the Torah. I just didn't have the Torah, you know what I'm saying? And so I looked at it, uh, decided to purchase it because I felt an unction in my spirit to purchase it. So I purchased uh, the Torah and I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So I've had this Torah for many, many, my goodness, many, many years. This is what it looks like, y'all. This is what it looks like, okay? It's the original word of God before it was translated um, in the King James Version, okay? And I was so excited about um, getting uh, the Torah and sitting down and reading it where I discovered that there were more than um, the plagues that are written in our Bible. There were some two plagues that were missing. And so that's good to know because you want to know God for real, for real. You don't want to like three quarters of a way know him. You want to know him for real, for real. So I was able to glean the extra information that didn't make it <clears throat> into our Bible. So I can know God for real, for real. But when the rabbi was speaking at our church, the rabbi stated that the African-American uh, people are part of the original tribe of Israel. The Jewish people that are on the earth today are mixed breed They're, because they intermarried. And so, you know, he said, you know, they've known that for many, many, many years. And um, after that message, the Holy Spirit directed me to go get my DNA tested. And he told me, he told me that I am from the original tribe of Israel. I wasn't grafted in. I am the original tribe of Israel. And um, that I'm from the tribe of Judah. Now, this is what the Holy Spirit said to me. So, I looked for... Um, a DNA company that was searching for the lost tribe of Israel. I obeyed the Spirit of God and I had my DNA tested. And sure enough, I'm from the original tribe of Israel. I'm from, I have, I have Jewish DNA in my system. It showed up in my blood. It showed up in my DNA to the point where uh, a representative from Israel reached out to me because they located one of the, the lost tribes, okay? So I just wanted to make share, sure I shared that uh, with you because this came, this information came out of my, uh, my seek for God, my wanting to know God for real, for real, and God revealing truth to me about himself and about me, okay? So that would explain a lot about why I am the way that I am. I come from that DNA of um, God's child. He's in my blood. You see what I'm saying? And so I um, just found it to be so uh, fascinating, this journey and this walk uh, that I am on uh, with God, filled with discoveries and adventure. And so I love putting the pieces parts together. I excel in research. Um, I like connecting the dots and getting the full picture. So with that being said, God wants me to make sure I tell you that history about God, history about him has been written down for many, many, many years. It's also been purposely scattered 
so that humanity uh, doesn't know God for real, for real. And um, I enjoy learning about God. I just enjoy learning about him. Um, he knows everything about me. I mean, God knows every detail about me. And so I work really hard with learning about details about my Father in Heaven. So then you would understand a little bit more about me as a woman of God, me as a believer, okay? Why I have this unique, special relationship with God. It's because I purpose in my heart to know God for real. And that to, uh, I don't want to, you know, God pulled me out of the world, y'all. Remember I told y'all uh, in my testimony on the Kingdom Elegance podcast how I was brought up. I was brought up around a bunch of foolishness, you know what I'm saying? There was a lot of great stuff that I had in my life. But that spiritual tip and how to walk with God, y'all know I did not have that. So that's something I desire. I want to know God. I want to know his ways. I, uh, I find a learning about God very, very intriguing. It's, you know, here recently I was looking at a, a history doc documentary on, um, I think it was uh, the History Channel. I think it was on the History Channel. And um, they were talking about how when Jesus was up on the cross and the soldiers pierced his side and blood and water came out and how the, the blood from Jesus' side trickled down to the mercy seat um, of God uh, and how uh, an archaeologist uh, took samples of Jesus' blood and then took it to a scientific lab to test it, they discovered that Jesus' blood only had 23 chromosomes and the rest of humanity has 46. See, that's that kind of stuff right there, those details, I find fascinating uh, to learn, you know, about our Lord and Savior and about our heavenly father okay i just find it fascinating i i want to know i want i like learning things um about god and god had already told me to go check my blood he said go get your blood tested go get your dna tested because you belong to me miss lois and you come from the tribe of judah okay did exactly what god told me to do and sure enough it was true. Came right in my um, my my lab report. So I'm going to move on um, from there and uh, show you something. So along my journey of walking with God, He has encouraged me to um, purchase books because He knows that I'm seeking him for real, for real. I don't have I don't have a half seat with God. I don't be shucking and jiving with my father in heaven. I want to know him for real, for real. And that's probably another reason why I'm not afraid of him because I get to know God. You see what I'm saying? And so uh, God had me purchase the book of Jubilees. So let me show you what that looks like. <clears throat> this is the book of Jubilees. It's another ancient holy book that the Jewish people have knowledge of where events and times and information about God uh, has been written down and shared from generation to generation, right? And so I want to read something to you because I'm sure many of you have never heard of this before, not unless you have a real seek with God and you found this information or you discovered this information. So 
I'm going to read um, in the book of Jubilees. It says, and on the new moon on the first month, and on the new moon on the fourth month, and on the new moon on the seventh month, and on the new moon on the tenth month. So there's four times in a year that God says on the new moon, um, they're going to be called the days of remembrance, okay? So, today, um, July the 5th, uh, this is considered um, a new moon and uh, the days of remembrance. And the days of remembrance um, are the days and seasons in the four divisions of the year that God created. Okay, so we're talking about God's calendar. So the first month, with which is uh, January, the fourth month, which is April. So January is winter, April is spring. Um, the seventh month, which is July, this is considered summer. And then the 10th month is going to be fall. That's how God divided the seasons. So you'll notice how the world divides the seasons differently. But God says to us in the book of Jubilee, we are to follow his uh, way of doing everything. Even when it comes down to dividing um, the seasons, okay? And then so God says, on these days um, and seasons, they're divided into four divisions of the year. These are written and ordained as a testimony forever. So, you know, God says these are ordained seasons and they are a testimony forever. That means nobody can change it. So today, July the 5th, according to God, is the first day of summer. Not when the world on the news tells you summer started. Okay? And so it's a day where... And a time where God expects his people to remember what he's uh, done on the earth, created the earth and the seasons, and a day of remembering what God um, established in the earth through Noah. Okay, so I'm going to read on a little bit more. So you can understand the days of remembrance. So this is what happened during those four different uh, times, uh, seasons that God established for the days of remembrance. And on the new moon, on the first month, that's in January, he was bidden by God to make for himself an ark. So, on these seasons of the month, God is talking. He is establishing things during these times. It's a covenant. It's established in the heavens that during these seasons, in the times of each month, God is talking. He's establishing things. He's doing things. So it's good to know these seasons to find out what God is saying to us in the earth. Okay. And to us individually. So for today, July the 5th, 2024, on the new moon, God said to me as I was sleeping and coming out of my sleep, that he was upset. He was talking to me about his people. And he was telling me why he was upset. Because they didn't honor, respect, or reverence him. I wanted to make sure to use those three words. Because those are the three words that he spoke to my spirit. I want to make sure I come on camera 
and tell you what God said. So on the new moon, on the first month, he, Noah, was bidden by God to make for himself an ark. So God is talking on the first, uh, on the new moon, on the first month, telling Noah to make an ark. And on that day, the earth became dry and he opened the ark and saw the earth. And on the new moon, on the fourth month, that's April, the mouths of the depths of the abyss beneath were closed. So God is closing things. He's closing the abyss underneath the earth so that when it rains, it's going to flood the earth and kill up everybody that's not on that ark, okay? And on the new moon... On the seventh month, that's July, we're in the month of July, all the mouths of the abyss of the earth were open and the waters began to descend into them, okay? So on the seventh month in July, that's when God opened the abyss and all the floodwaters began to come off the earth, come out the earth. And on the new moon of the 10th month, the tops of the mountains were seen and Noah was glad. So God is speaking during these four different seasons of the earth. God is demonstrating um, what he's doing in the earth during these four seasons of the month. God works within, within his calendar. That's what I want to make sure I share with people. He's 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 working with inside of his calendar. So it's important when you belong to God that you know these seasons and that you pay attention to what's what's taking place. Um during April the eighth, the uh new moon in one of the seasons for that God mentioned here. Um, God was talking to us in the sky with the eclipse. And in the history of watching what God does when the eclipse aligns itself through a certain territory, I knew that judgment was uh, coming to America. And I told everybody about that. During that time of the Day of Remembrance on April the 8th, 2024, I was in covenant relationship with my God while the eclipse was taking place um, in the earth. And God had spoke to me on that day and told me not to go outside. And I told everybody not to go outside. You know, it was up to people if they want to hear it or not. But something took place and people got sick. I obeyed God and did what I, what God told me to do. But I was in covenant relationship with God. I had special communion. I had a special meal. I, I gave honor, respect, and reverence to God on the day of remembrance in the month of April on the first new moon. And I was in deep covenant relationship with God, telling him, how wonderful he is, how magnificent he is, how mighty powerful he is, reminding him that he did a mighty thing through Noah and what he did uh, on the earth. You know what I'm saying? I have deep respect, deep um, honor, and deep reverence for God. And I show it. I literally show it. I let him know that I know he's the one. He's my father in heaven, and I respect him to the highest level. Okay? So I wanted to make sure I shared it with you because the same thing is going to go happen today. I am going to have um, a special meal. I'm going to I've already told him, but I'm going to tell him again with the special meal after it's prepared, uh, how mighty wonderful he is, 
um, how uh, magnificent he is, how he protects me. God is always protecting me. Remember I shared a testimony how, how my dad protected me. He took protection to heights unseen, stuff I ain't never seen a human man do before in my life. My daddy was my protector, but God is my ultimate protector. He, he protects me, y'all. He looks out for me and my family. He tells me, Lois, the world is getting ready to concoct some mess. Don't take the bite. Tell your family, don't do it. And I can't go into detail because we're on social media. See, when you're in covenant relationship with God, God talk to you. He'll protect you from all the traps of the enemy. No matter how hard Satan try to get you to fall into a trap, when you're in covenant relationship with God, baby, your life is protected, okay? Um, God has protected me from someone trying to um, hurt me, uh, break into my house. I told you how God uh, sent a prophetic word to my youngest daughter, who's um, a prophet. That girl, ooh, that girl's gift for something else. Mommy, I see somebody used by the devil, concocted a plan to come break through the side of your house. I heard you. Yes, God, I received that. Thank you. However you wanted to send me a warning, I received that, Father. And uh, God protected me. Not only that, I remember uh, years ago, and I shared this testimony before, I was taking a bath, minding my own business. And uh, God spoke to me while I was in the bathtub. And he said, pick up your Bible and read this song. I said, okay, God. And then he said, read that song to me. Whenever anybody tries to destroy your life, read that song to me, Lois. And I will protect you. I said, okay, God. Now, these are instructions from God to me. Y'all, I picked up the Bible. I read that song. I said, whoo, wait a minute. I said, that's who, Lord have mercy, Lord. He said, do what I told you to do. And then I go to church and a guest pastor uh, calls me to the altar. And he said, God said, he's already told you what to do. When Satan uses people to come up against you to destroy your life, God says, if you don't obey his instructions, he going to do it himself. I said, woo, y'all, I shook. I was at the altar shaking. Do you hear me? When I tell you my God protects me, baby, he protects me because I'm in covenant relationship with the creator of the universe. I honor, respect, and give reverence to my Father in heaven. Do you hear me? And I hear to the word of the living God. I line up to his calendar. I line up to his word, okay? I put the pieces, parts together creating a full picture with nothing missing and nothing broken so I could walk in the fullness of God so I can know my God from the beginning to the end with the information that's provided uh, to me and I I notice as I walk with God and line up to his calendar line up to his word he got re will reveal more of himself to me he reveals more of himself to me and i love it it but again you know um i'm still human 
Um, and I told you with all of this magnificent knowledge and grand relationship with my creator, I humble myself underneath the mighty hands of God by pushing my plate back once a week, uh, fasting and praying so that uh, I don't get full of myself. You know, uh, I told you before, you know, God dealt with me years ago about the fruit of the spirit and what he expects from me, his daughter. And behaving like the devil is not one of them. And so when people get full of themselves and they get very, very arrogant and nasty comes out of them and uh, sabotage comes out of them and jealousy and hate. I told y'all jealousy is cruel as the grave. Jealousy put Abel in the grave. I'm trying to tell you now. Get away from jealous people. If you have to be around them for maybe a project you're working on or event that you're working on, God will show you how to protect yourself and he'll point out traps so you don't fall into the trap that's being set up for you um you still don't behave when god shows you traps don't act funky with people don't misbehave and start acting like the dark side just know what you're dealing with Pray for people and don't start, don't step in the darn trap because, ooh, if you just step in the trap, ooh, they got you and they so happy about that. Ooh, they just cheer and gnash their teeth when you snap, step into a trap. And God is telling you not to step into the traps. He's going to point out the traps to you. So you don't step in a trap. And God says that angels are watching your enemies. They're watching and writing down what your enemies are doing. And God says, seed time and harvest will come to them. It's not going to go well for them because they just want you to fall. They, they want you to fall in the trip. God said, not so. Is not so. It will not go down the way they plan it, says the Spirit of God. So, yeah, when you're in covenant protection with God and you honor, respect, and reverence Him, I'm looking at my paper, making sure I say those words in the way He said it to me. Uh, you're protected. You're protected by God in many, many ways. Um, and you have to listen to God, pay attention to him on purpose. Get up every day uh, with your spirit being in tune to the Holy Spirit that dwells inside of you. If you accepted Jesus and if you are filled with the precious Holy Ghost, God will talk to you. He'll tell you. He'll tell you some things. He'll tell you, okay, Lord, there's a trap over there. Don't step in it. You're being set up to fall into a trap. You got enemies. You got people who don't want to see you do well. They got the seed of Satan in them. They're jealous of you. Don't step into the trap. I don't tell people I know what they're doing. When I see that people are setting me up for the trap, I don't tell them. I just see you for who you are. I put you in God's hand. I let God handle that. God will handle all of that. I'm trying to tell you. I've been walking with God for so long. I already know how it goes down. It doesn't end well. When you, even, even when my enemies fall, I don't cheer and clap with gladness because it's evil. That's wickedness. When your enemies fall, it's because they planted seeds to make them fall. Seed time and harvest works for everybody. 
If you plant bad seed, you're going to get a harvest of a bad seed. Nobody escapes from that, not even myself. Okay? Nobody escapes the laws of God and how it goes down. So I automatically know if someone is setting up a trap for me, that seed time and harvest is in activation. And it will backfire and come back to them. I already know that. I've been walking with God for over 40 years. I already know how God's laws work. I've seen it work. So this is a part of your covenant of protection. Okay. God had a covenant of protection with uh, Noah and his family. God spoke to Noah and said, this is what's getting ready to take place in the earth. I need you to build this ark. And then God was speaking and closing up abyss and then opening up abyss to drain the water of the floods from the earth and then showing the mountain um, all within his calendar. Okay? And so I wanted to explain to you the days of remembrance and how God's calendar works, how he divides the seasons. And in the book of Jubilee, God also says that there are 364 days, not 365. The world changed it. So again, you know, Lois goes by God's calendar and I pay attention to what takes place within his calendar and how he speaks. So expect God to speak to you whenever he wants to speak to you, but especially uh, during the days in the months of remembrance. So this is uh, Prophetess Nurse Lois uh, coming to you from the Lois Banks Ministry. Also to... I want to make sure I share this with you as well because I told you, um, you know, that I have the Dead Sea Scroll and how, um, and I've shared this before with people, you know, God tells me to purchase holy books. So I have the Dead Sea Scroll and inside of the Dead Sea Scrolls, God is, Jesus is talking to people and teaching them about internal cleansing and how to clean out the body. So like if all of this information was inside of our Bible, the Bible would just be too heavy to pick up and read. So you got to learn how to pull the pieces, parts together as God directs. Okay. It's got to be a holy book. Okay. And so uh, another holy book uh, that I have, um, is the complete uh, Ethiopian uh, Bible, okay? Let me share that with you, show you what that looks like. I have the complete Ethiopian uh, Bible. So when I tell you that um, I enjoy learning about God, putting the pieces, parts together, uh honoring God, respecting him, and showing reverence uh, to him. Um, it's because I'm in covenant relationship with my uh, Father in heaven. And I honor the Sabbath day and I keep it holy from Friday sunset to Saturday sunset is the established um, holy day for the Sabbath day. And um, it's a blessed day. I honor God. Um, you have to learn how to rightfully divide the word of God. So in the book of Jubilee, the day of remembrance is a established covenant in the written on the tablets of heaven forever. So that means in the New Testament, the New Testament doesn't supersede the word forever anytime you see something written in the bible that says we are to honor a feast day or a special event forever forever means forever while you're breathing and living 
on this earth. This is Prophetess Nurse Lois coming to you uh, from the Lois Banks Ministry, sharing my walk with you, sharing knowledge with you, sharing God's calendar with you, how God works within his own calendar that he created, how God talks to us within the calendar that he created. Now, he can talk to you anytime throughout the year. But pay close attention to those set-aside months that I just shared with you on this video. And um, listen out for God's direction and, and pay attention to the earth, what he's doing, what God is doing um, in the earth. And see time and harvest. Uh, it's a law that God wrote uh, in the earth. So when judgment falls, it's not like God goes from good and loving to kind to let me just throw something on the people and mess their whole life up. No, it's, it's a law. So what happens is when people go against God's law, People, the people activate the judgment and the judgment falls. The people activate it. So either you can activate blessings or you can activate curses based on how you're living. If you go against God's word, then you will activate a curse. You yourself turn the key and the curse comes out because you activated it. If you want to activate the blessing, you turn the key by adhering to the word of the living God. And then the blessings flow. So the judgment and all of that is activated by people. Okay, so just want to make sure I share that with you because... Um, our God is a loving, uh, kind God who established uh, laws in the earth. That's why it's so important that parents teach their children the word of the living God so that the children can be uh, very, very successful. It's not good enough that your children are educated and go off and to have this wonderful life outside of God because their life somewhere along the way, if they don't know God's laws will be cursed it's important that you teach your children god's laws and his ways so they can stay away from the judgment and the curses and only open up the doors of blessing and success okay so this is prophetess nurse lois coming to you from the lois banks ministry i'm excited about today um i love on a celebration uh, gathering event for the Lord. Back in the day, I used to throw uh, uh, birthday parties uh, for Jesus. Um, I would send out invitations, invite um, adults and children to my house, invite the Lord Jesus to my house in honor of his birthday being born for humanity and it was such a special event because heaven was in my house you know i had angels y'all uh in my house uh there was a spot in my house right in front of my fireplace uh it was a place like a portal where if God wanted to talk to me, I would be in that spot and he would take me out in the spirit and show me things and talk to me. And I would tell people when they came in my house, I said, don't stand in the spot, not unless you want to have a visitation um, and an encounter uh, with the Lord. So I gave a warning up front, right? And so, oh my goodness, I cannot ever forget this. One of my dearest friends, we've been friends for over 40 years. 
she brought a friend to the birthday party this tall dude oh my goodness he he was 200 and something pounds about six four something like that y'all he was tall his name was thomas and so I said to him, you know, I made sure I told him, I was like, no, don't step in this spot because it's a special anointed spot ordained by God to uh, talk to whoever is in this spot. And so uh, Thomas, I was talking some, some, just some junk, like I was just saying stuff, right? That man, I was in the kitchen getting the food and everything together that man stepped in that spot the angels was right there because i got angels in my house the angels was right there that man that big old man all i heard was a boom it was, and i heard it you know heard him fall down on the ground and he was gone y'all he, he was just gone in the spirit with god and uh my girlfriend fell out laughing she said lois told you not to step in that spot not that you want to have a encounter with God and then my girlfriend came uh to me in the kitchen she was crying laughing she couldn't stop laughing because here this big old man is on the floor in some, in front of my fireplace I mean he was gone y'all I went in there and checked on him his eyes were shut he was gone it was his spirit was in communion with God and then uh some time later when God got finished talking to him he came back he was like I ain't never had nothing like that happen uh, to me before in my life. But he had an encounter with God. I said, I told everybody, if you don't want to have a conversation with God and you don't want him talking to you, don't don't step in that spot. And that's just the kind of relationship I've had with God. I've always had a very uh, special and uh, unique uh, relationship with God where he's very very close to me where he's very 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 super close to the point where it probably will scare the average person how close god is with me but again you know i've been walking on like this with god for years it's i'm used to walking close uh with god um I told you before, I'm, I'm not afraid of him. I respect, honor, and give reverence to him. Um, and I've always had um, a close relationship with him. I remember years ago asking God to help me walk as close to him um, as I can on the earth. Because I want to be close to him. I want to learn how to walk close to him. And he came to me three times in prayer. I should have had a clue. The first time he asked me, he says, can you walk the walk that I walked? I said, yes, Lord, with your help, I can do it. And so he came back to me again the second time. Can you walk the walk that I walked? I said, well, God, if you if you're there with me i can do it if you if you show me how to do it god i can do it and the third time i said the same thing and the third time lord have mercy all kinds of cray cray y'all whoa stirred to happen he was like you said you could walk the walk that i walked so i'm gonna show you how to walk it and that's another reason why I have a special relationship with God. He showed me how to walk it, baby. Yes, he showed me how to walk it. And so um, I wanted to make sure that I shared that side of my relationship with God um, as well. So I have uh, the natural side of me that flows as a nurse, licensed nurse, educated woman with two degrees and, you know, do the, the, do the human side of life. And then I have that supernatural, powerful walk with God. But yet, I uh, walk in balance, you know, like, Sometimes people get really, really off balance when they have 
um, this type of relationship with God. I've seen him. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't like that weirdness, that weirdness that people have when they uh, have a very unique walk with God. I'm very down to earth. Uh, we're very balanced. Um, I, I believe in being balanced. Okay. And, but I have two sides to my personality. I have, um, that, that human experience of being a human. And then I have that deep relationship, covenant relationship with the creator of the universe, my heavenly father. So this is Prophet is Nurse Lois sharing my walk with you, educating you of, about holy books, about God's calendar, about when you see the word forever written in your Bible. That means you're not to ever forget it. You're to acknowledge it. Okay. And um, when you see the word forever in the holy books, you are to remember it and to acknowledge it. The New Testament doesn't supersede the word forever. Forever means forever. That means you're supposed to do it. So, listen, enjoy your day. Um, again, I do not have to work. I am going to uh, go in the house put together a special meal um, for my heavenly father, the creator of the universe. I'm going to celebrate him all day today and tell him how magnificent and how wonderful and how mighty powerful he is. And I'm going to let him know I remember his mighty works and what he's done in the earth and his calendar that he set up in the earth and that i'm adhering uh to his calendar and that i thank him for his protection for me and for my family listen the father god loves you jesus loves you the holy ghost loves you i love you and jesus is lord